And did USA Swimming respond at all to your letter resigning and raising these concerns? No. They've, they've said nothing. They've said nothing. The NCAA has said nothing. Again, University of Pennsylvania refers the girls for therapy to get over their upset. This is this is par for the course, is it not, Nancy? Like, it's somebody else's problem. No one has the courage to speak out. As if we're, we're going to pretend there's no way of speaking out without being sensitive. Yes, someone is going to get, get a little upset. But right now, they've just settled on, well, it's going to be the girls. And too bad. Yeah, first of all, Megan, thank you so much for having me on here today to be able to talk about this. Um, I think it 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 speaks to um, the the sex discrimination that you see throughout sport and the lazy way to go about transgender inclusion in sport is just to say, look, you know, transgender women can just participate in here uh, if they and and not really go with the science, not really go where the science is. Now, I'm a lawyer. I'm not a scientist. But so it's hard for me to speak about exactly what happens when somebody does go on uh, gender affirming hormones. But what I can speak to is what is the percentage difference of between men and women, like like what 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 does male puberty get somebody? Mm-hmm. And that typically is, as Cynthia was just saying, somewhere between eight and twelve percent, usually right around you know eleven and a half percent. We've done a whole bunch of different numbers, and Leah has only reduced her times by um, a little over two percent, a little over five percent in the two hundred and the five hundred um, uh, yards, respectively. So that is not mitigation. That is not fair. She still retains a huge advantage over her other competitors. And, um, you know, at the same time, we are not thinking about how it is that we're going to include transgender men to be able to participate. So I competed at the height of when the East German women were taking steroids. So they were shaving their faces and they, you know, were taking as as many steroids as one can take and a lot yeah. of them did transition after their after their competitive days and in no way were they close to the the men's times they so they were not mm. competitive in the men's category so on the one hand you're taking trans women and having it be unfair, but there's no unfairness in the other direction. And we're not thinking about like, well, okay, so if that's not fair, well, how do we change sport? How do we adapt sport so that trans athletes can participate, but just not head to head competition? Yeah, so far, it's been the, the women, the biological women need to shut up and take it. That's it. Shut up and take it it. or you're or you're a bigot. And it does take courage to say, hold on. That's not true. We can find a a sensitive alternative. Um, And no, not everyone's going to be perfectly happy in the end. But what's happened right now is all women on every team have been told you will be the unhappy ones, period, without any debate or even any weighing in from the NCAA or USA Swimming. And you tell me, Cynthia, because what I hear now is the NCAA, they've been saying, you know what, we're also just going to change it so that every sport can determine what it's going to do. Like in the Olympics, now it's the Olympics, said every sport's going to determine, do you really need somebody to take cross-gender hormones for a year? Maybe that's not necessary. Maybe it could be shorter than a year. Like, what? Because that's only going to lead people to want to be more and more accommodating of the trans swimmer or trans athlete and less and less of the biological, uh, you know, girls. It's always women. Yeah, I'm going to leap on what Nancy just said. It's the women who are suffering. And there's two points to be made here. When Nancy started swimming as a young girl, there was no Title IX. And when I was playing lacrosse in college, there was no Title IX. Mm -hmm. And women really got the shaft. Women got so were treated so unequally. Finally, women are being treated equally. Finally, women are allowed to shine as athletes. And so as Nancy adequately so well pointed out, this is never going to affect men's sports. It's only going to affect women's sports. And second, Megan, what does this do to all those little girl swimmers, those eight and unders, those nine tens? They looked up to people like Nancy. You think of Janet Evans, you think of Jenny Thompson, you think of all those great swimmers. And those little girls look up to them And now basically USA Swimming and the NC2A is throwing them all under the bus. You don't matter. You don't matter. And that's what really 
is so it's such a travesty, in my mm-hmm. opinion. I know you've both pointed out, you know, years you, you you look at the difference between male and female swimmers, especially post puberty, which, of course, Leah is well past puberty. Um you know, men, men get taller, men get bigger hands and feet, men get sort of that sort of broad shouldered, more narrow waisted look and women kind of go the opposite. Right? We grow breasts, our bottoms get bigger, our hips get bigger. We're awesome. We, we look totally gorgeous as a result. However, <laughs> it's not the most conducive thing to being a fast swimmer, Nancy. Yeah, but even even when you take sort of like like I mean, when you look at Missy Franklin, who's an icon in swimming, and Ryan Lochte, another icon. Uh, okay, so they both have the same sized hands. They have the same wingspan. They weigh the same. They're about the same height. And guess what? There's about eleven or twelve percent difference in their times. If if Missy Franklin had to compete against Ryan Lochte and in the men's category, we would never know her name. Mm-hmm. We need to be able to have uh, you know have draw some boundaries around the girls and women's category in the same way that we draw boundaries around a weight class. The same way we draw boundaries, what Cynthia does when it comes to para sports on what somebody's level of ability is. Um, what that designation determines is whether or not they get to win or not. And, um, you know, I, I've been a Title IX advocate for a very long time in my right. career. And starting, um, it used to be that we were, what we were fighting for was to make sure that you could have sex segregation in sport, right? We almost have no racial segregation throughout society. We have almost no religious segregation throughout society, but we do when it comes to sport. We have sex segregation. We have separate but equal over here. So to preserve that, what I've been saying, literally, I'm not exaggerating, for the last 30 years is in order for girls and women to have an equal opportunity to participate in sports, they need to have their own team. Mm-hmm. Mm. And here I am. It's right. It's a different situation, but it's the same principle. Girls and women need to be able to have their own team in order to be able to to participate, to win, to break the records, to and have role models for other people to look up to all those little girls that Cynthia was just mm-hmm. talking about. Well, and I want to get to what the options are in a minute. But let me start with this, Nancy, because what or Cynthia, because what would you do like as a swimming official? If you if you saw a transgender swimmer like Leah, what would you do? How would you have handled that? Well, as Leah, if Leah came on my deck, I would welcome Leah to swim. But we have a couple options. Leah could time trial or Leah could swim exhibition because the underlying focus of USA Swimming Rules is fairness. We make sure that every lane is fair for every kid to the point that we make sure the lane lines are straight. We make sure that the flags are straight. We make sure that that the blocks are solid. We want to make sure that every swimmer is treated fairly. And by Leah swimming, that is not fair competition to the other women in the pool. So I would say, Leah, swim against Leah. Keep swimming. But your times could either be time trial or they could be exhibition times. And I would make that clear to the coach as well. As a referee, that's what I would do. 